everyone! Welcome back to Xcoding with Alvian. In this video, we're going to build a Vision OS and iOS AR Inventory Tracker app. It's an app which can be used by the users to manage their items with seamless augmented reality integration support. The user can use the iOS app to add inventory items with name and quantity attributes. The main feature of this app is the ability to upload and preview 3D USB model, either from the file picker or turn photos captured directly from iPhone with LiDAR camera sensor into high-quality 3D models using the object capture photogrammetry. Will you explore object capture in the next video of this series? And next, we'll use Firebase Firestore to store the inventory items and upload the USD files to the cloud. The Vision OS app listens and syncs to the Firestore database updates to the UI in real time. The inventory items attributes will be displayed with a 3D model inside a grid list. Users can drag the item to preview the real 3D visual representation of the item using the quick look preview in the shared, in the shared space environment. They can also tap to open a new volumetric window where can they can perform multiple gestures such as drag for 3D rotation and also magnify to scale the item, make it larger or smaller. So we have a lot of things to build and learn from this video. And without further ado, let's begin and start coding. Let me give you a demo of the complete app that we will build in this video. So I have the app open both on my iPhone and Apple Vision Pro simulator. On iOS, the inventory items are presented in a list containing attributes such as name and quantity, as well as the thumbnail image of the item. On Vision OS, the inventory items are presented in a grid list with the associated 3D models rendered. So let me zoom in, I can adjust the camera angle, see the items rendered in 3D. Oh, the MacBook Air 15, that looks nice. The Nike shoes as well, okay. iPhone 14 Pro, wow, this is amazing, man. Okay, let me reset the camera. And by default, the application window in Vision OS can be resized. So here we can drag this from the bottom trailing to resize the window, as you can see. Wow, the grid items is able to adapt to the size of the window. Now it is displaying single row per item. Okay, so let me just resize it back. Okay, looks good. Now let me move on to the next feature. So from the iPhone app, we can add an inventory item by tapping on the displace item from the toolbar. Here we have the text field. Let me give it a name of Xbox controller. Okay. And let me select the quantity to one using the stepper here. And we are here we have the add USDZ button. So let me tap. It will present an action sheet containing two options select file and object capture. In this video, we're going to focus on the select file from the file importer. And then in the next video, we're going to implement the object capture scanner using the iPhone LiDAR camera okay, within the app. Now, so, uh, let me select the file. It will open the file importer. Let me select Xbox controller. It will upload to Firebase storage. It will also generate the thumbnail image based on the USDZ. So on here, I can also view the USDZ in my environment. Okay, I can put it here on top of my MacBook Pro. Wow, this looks nice, right? <laughs> Let me close it. And now, notice the grid list in the Vision OS. We don't have the Xbox controller. So when I tap on this Save button, it should sync this uh, Xbox controller to the Vision OS in real time. Okay, one, two, three. Nice. We can see the Xbox controller here rendered in the Vision OS grid list. Looks amazing, right? 
Now, let me tap on this Xbox controller. This will open a new volumetric window. Okay. So, in this new volumetric window, it will also provide the render 3D model of the item. So, we can use the drag gesture to rotate it around in 3D space. We can also use the two finger pinch gesture to scale it to large and small. Wow, this looks nice, right? Amazing. Okay, now let me open the iPhone app again in here. Let me select Xbox controller again and update the name here. Xbox series controller, set the quantity to two. And let me save. And if you see the name should be updated in real time. One, two, three. Okay, nice Xbox series controller, quantity is two. Okay, now let me open it again. And here we have the delete button. So when I tap this delete button, this window should be dismissed and it will also be removed from the list from the Apple Vision Pro Simulator. Okay, one, two, three. Nice, the window got dismissed. The item is removed from the list. This is amazing, right? Okay, so one more thing. Let me drag this item macbook air from this application window to the shared space okay drag it nice again as you can see it is now rendered in the shared space so we can put it around here maybe here uh, give me some time it's a bit tricky to Play around when using the simulator, right? Okay, we can put it here in the stable. <laughs> this looks nice, right? So basically, we have the 3D visual representation of our item inside our environment, right? And basically, this is very, very helpful if you want to decorate your room and simulate the location of where you should place your item. This is very, very revolution revolutionary. Okay, so that's basically it for this quick demo and now let me close the simulator and iphone preview okay and let's begin creating the project in xcode okay so before we begin make sure you download the latest xcode 15 from apple website okay for this video i'm currently using xcode 15 beta 5 and Let's create a new project in Xcode. So create an iOS app here. Click next. For the product name, give it a name you want. For me, I'm going to give it a name of XCA Inventory Tracker. Okay, make sure interface is using CFUI. And then click next. Save it anywhere you want. Okay, it creates the IRS target for us. And next, let's create another target. Select new target. And now select Fission OS. And let's find that. Select the application template. For the product name, I'm going to give the name of XCA Inventory Tracker. Fission, okay, XCA Envoy Tracker Fission for the Fission OS target. Okay, make sure the initial scene is selected to window. And for immersive space, just, just select none. Okay, click finish. Okay, it creates the project for us. The next thing that we want to do is to go to the project settings. And select this project, XC Inventory Tracker here, and select Package Dependencies. Okay. We're going to add Firebase iOS SDK. Make sure you use the version at least version 10.13.0. Okay. And then just select Add Package. It will download the 
dependencies it will probably take some time okay it's done now just select add package and here select the ios target first xca inventory tracker and what we need to add is only several frameworks if it is automatically added all frameworks for you just remove them all and what we are going to use is only firebase firestore firebase firestore swift and firebase storage so only those three click add okay it is added and next for the fission target as well let me add firebase firestore firebase firestore swift and firebase storage and click add okay the next thing we are going to need is make sure you go to the firebase dashboard here and then create your app go to your app dashboard i have created mine inventory tracker okay the first thing that you need to do is to create the app both for your vision os apple bundle id and your ios apple bundle id so i have created mine this is my uh, ios bundle ID inventory tracker and this is one is for my vision os bundle id okay so make sure you download them to your local machine what i mean is downloading the surface info playlist okay so make sure you are using the same name as the one that you're using in your bundle id you can make sure by checking it in this signing and capabilities okay so for ios this is inventory tracker okay let me update this to use inventory tracker okay and for fission os let me verify okay this is already correct in xia inventory tracker vision let me download the ios first to my local machine okay and also for the xia inventory tracker vision let me also download it okay let me do it first for the vision os target okay this is the vision os google surface info playlist okay i'm going to drag this here and make sure it only check the xia inventory tracker vision okay click finish copy items if needed next one is the ios one okay let me drag the ios google service info playlist okay make sure the only the ios target is selected okay don't copy the wrong file make sure it is correct okay now we have the google service info playlist for each of the ios and vision os target okay okay so now let me just close this what we need to know uh, to do now is click this build and click this firestore database okay so when you start uh clicking this firestore if you haven't if you just uh, created your app you need to provision your firestore database so there will be a window a dialog where you can just follow the guide to create the provision the firestore database and make sure to just uh create it using the development test mode okay so it should allow you to write and read from the database without the rules okay and the next one you need to also click the storage also when you open the create the project for the first time i think you also need to provision a bucket so just follow the instruction from the dialog in the firebase storage and create your bucket here so this is my bucket i've created the storage and also the firestore database provision them okay so that's it for the provisioning the next thing that we are going to do is you need to install the firebase cli tools okay so i provide the link to description this is the cli tools and also the local emulator suite because in this video we are going to use the local emulator suite to simulate the firestore database locally as well as the firebase storage so we are not going to connect to the google cloud server we are going to just 
store it in the local host using this local emulator. Okay, I've provided the link to install the CLI as well as the emulator from the description. So you just need to follow the guide. Okay, so the next thing is let's navigate to the developer terminal here. And now I'm going to create a new folder to store the Firebase project. I'm going to give the name of Firebase Inventory Tracker. Okay. And in here, I'm going to just cd into the new directory and then type Firebase in it. Okay. So in here, I'm just going to select Firestore and Storage. Okay. Enter and just select Use an Existing Project. I'm going to select my project, which is the Inventory Tracker. Okay. Setup wait okay just enter just use the default one enter enter okay firebase initialization complete okay so let me open it in visual studio code and let me drag the window in here okay first thing is select this firebase.json and Below this storage, add a new field key. Give it a name of emulators, okay? And then it's going to be a JSON as well. So for the Firestore emulator, we're going to just declare the host to be to use this 0, .0, .0 okay? By using this, it should enable us to access the localhost emulator from the real iPhone device, okay? Passing the IP address of this computer. For the port, let's just use ATT for the Firestore. Next one is the storage emulator, where the storage. Let's also set the host to 000. And for the port, for further storage, let's use 9199, okay? And next, set the UI with a JSON of enable and set it to true. Okay, emulators, file store, and storage, okay? So this is the one, just follow this. Next one is the Firestore.rules. Firestore, next one is Firestore.rules. So just make the read and write. Just remove this restriction, okay? So, so just read, uh, let the allow read and write without any constraints, okay? But in production, don't do this, okay? You need to perform some kind of authentication using Firebase authentication. Maybe you just need to allow access and read write when the document is owned by that particular user, authenticated user. Okay. And next one is the storage uh, rules. Let's do the same. Okay. So this is done. This is done. Next thing is just we need to start the emulator. So just use Firebase Emulators Start. It should start the Firestore and the Storage Emulator. Okay, so we can copy this address here, localhost, to open the UI. Open link. Okay, let me open this in Chrome. Okay, so this is the emulator UI. We have the Firestore as well as the storage, okay? Nice, right? So we can stop the data, we can upload the file, and we can see the data that we have stored and the file that we have uploaded as well from the app letter. Okay, so this is done. Next thing is... So to enable Fission OS to be able to build successfully on the current Firebase 10.13.0, we need to as a special flag when we start the Xcode, okay? So for now, let's quit Xcode, okay? Quit Xcode first, and then from the terminal, 
let's navigate to the Xcode approach directory sorry I think I put it in the developer here okay so this is the Xcode project so what we need to do is just use this open and pass this env okay and pass this black firebase source fire store okay and then pass the location of the xcode approach okay so it's going to pass a flag where it tells the fire source to build using the source rather than binary distribution because using uh, building using binary distribution currently doesn't work on the Xcode 15 beta 5 but probably in the future it will right for sure but for now let's do this okay now we should be able to build the project on the vision OS target using the source distribution okay before uh, as we waiting for that the dependencies to be resolved what we need to do next is to navigate to this project first one is ios okay so to connect to the local host as is, it is using http instead of https we need to set the ats settings right so create a new key and select this app transport security settings expand add a new key select allow laboratory loads and select set it to yes okay this should enable using the http for local host connecting to the local emulator do the same for the vision os target okay click plus select select app transport security settings expand it plus select allow laboratory loads or select this value and set the set it to yes okay it should enable us to connect to the local emulator suite now we have completed the project setup we should able to start building the app okay make sure you have run the local emulator as well in here okay before we continue okay now let me set the xcode to full screen so let's begin by creating a shared folder at the root here let me create a new group give it a name of shared we will put all the shared source files between both of the ios and vision os target in this folder okay so the first one is let's create a new swift file give it a name of app delegate okay make sure both targets are selected so in this app delegate.swift basically we will implement a app delegate class okay that conforms to the ui application delegate which will be invoked when the app launch basically what we are going to do is we are going to configure the firebase application by calling configure and it will basically use the Google Service Info PLS credentials to initialize the Firebase instance. Okay. And we also want to set up the local emulator suites when the app launch. Okay, so let's do it. So in here, first let's import Firebase Core and then Firebase Firestore and Firebase storage okay those three firebase sdk and let's also import ui kit and then let's declare a class app delegate make it conform to the ns object protocol and also the ui application delegate sorry ns object is a super class not a protocol okay so in here we're going to override the application did finish launching with options okay so just return true so to configure firebase we simply need to just invoke firebase app dot configure i think this is a static method okay and next one is let's create a method setup firebase local emulate local 
Pescado Emulator. Okay. Let me scroll a bit. First, let me create a far host. Okay. By default, it should be localhost, which is 127.0.0.1. Okay. But we want to add additional macro. So if the target environment is not simulator, basically if the target environment is currently device, right? We want to modify the host, okay? So you need to provide the IP address of your Mac, which you can find from the settings, okay? Get the IP address and then put it in here. Make sure your iPhone and Mac that runs the emulator are connected connected to the same Wi-Fi network, okay? And then just use the IP address from your computer. Okay, I'm going to put mine, which is this one nine two, that's one nine four eight dot nine nine dot seven three. Okay, actually it's fifty. Okay, so this will be executed when I'm running on the iPhone device. Let me let me show you the window of this. Okay, so on my local machine. It's connecting to this app address 192.168.50.73 okay so use your own and i'm just going to use my own in here continuing on let's declare let settings firestore dot firestore dot settings to get the settings and let's set the settings dot host to using this string interpolation okay Let's pass the host and then use this column to separate between the host and the port. For the port, it's going to be 8080, okay, based on the Firebase.json file that we have set in here, okay. First is 8080. Okay, continuing on, let's set the settings, cache settings, okay. So for local emulator, we're just going to use, assign it with the memory cache settings and make sure to set the settings dot is SSL enabled to force for the local emulator and let's set the firestore dot firestore settings to this configured settings that we have just done okay next one is for the storage as simple as just invoking storage the storage and then use emulator with host pass the host far and the port i'm going to use one nine one nine nine okay based on this okay so load this firebase app the configure let's create a command in here uncomment this line if you want to use local emulator, so, okay. So this is the let's invoke this setup Firebase local emulator. Okay, so we have the app delegate shared for both target. So let's now go to the app in iOS, the main entry point in here. So to connect to the CVI app. We simply need to just declare the using a special property wrapper, which is the UI application delegate adapter. You can simply pass app delegate app delegate dot self and then just give it a name of delegate. So basically this will be connecting the app delegate that we have created and will execute the did finish launching options when the app starts. Let's copy this and do the same for the Fission OS main app. Okay, that's it. We have set up the app delegate to use the Firebase local emulator in here. And as simple as just commenting this line to just use the production one. Next, inside this shared folder, create a new folder again and name it as models inside these models let's create our model for the item create a new save file 
give it the name of inventory item and make sure both of the targets are selected okay create so in here we will need to import firebase five star okay we will use the server's timestamp property wrapper and let's just declare it as a struct inventory item make it confirm to identifiable codable as well as equitable okay so the first property will be id okay so in here let's just assign it with the uuid uuid string as the default value and next we are going to use the server timestamp firestore property wrapper okay basically in here we just need to use this server timestamp and it basically tells Firestore to assign the date at the time the data is written inside the Firestore server. In here, give it a name of created at the type of optional date. Okay. This as well, second one, server timestamp. I think in here we need to use Firebase Firestore Swift. Okay, okay now updated that same date optional and now let's declare a far name string name of the item and then quantity which is integer the quantity of the item next let's declare uh, the usdc link okay this is basically an optional string so this contains the URL of the USDZ that we upload to the Firebase storage. So that will be optional. And by default, user can just create an item without uploading the USDZ model. Okay. Now let's declare a computed property for this USDZ URL. Okay. It should be an optional URL. This is computed. As simple as just guard lab on the USDC link else return nil and then continuing on return URL initializing it with the USDC link string that we have unwrapped and now let's also declare a thumbnail link okay so after we upload the USDC select the USDC from the importer file importer letter we will also use the apple quick look thumbnailing framework to generate a 300 by 300 jpeg thumbnail image based on the usdc file and we will use that to display the image of the atom on ios okay so thumbnail link optional string and also thumbnail url this is computed based on the value of the thumbnail link okay let's run rabbit if it is mail just return nil and then you can just return the url string passing the thumbnail link okay this is the model for our application we only have one model for this which is only the inventory item next we are going to also declare a observable observables of folder here inside the shared folder in here just create a new swift file give it a name of inventory list vm okay so in here i won't be using the new observable observation framework because it's currently doesn't working on the xcode 15 beta 5 it will create an error when we try to build it on the vision os so i'm just going to use the old plane observable object okay so let's import swift ui and import firebase firestore let's declare a class first inventory list view model make it conform to the observable object okay so this is basically an observable object that exposes a published property of inventory item array okay 
and it will listen to the Firestore snapshot updates collection and then update the array so it can be displayed in the CVUI view, the list. So to do that, let's take a published property for items and then assign it with the inventory item model. Okay, this was an empty array there, so the default value. And then let's just declare a main actor for the method. So it can be executed in the UI thread. So listen to items. So basically in here, I'm just going to access the Firestore, dot Firestore database and then just use the collection. In this case, we want to listen to the items collection change and we are going to add the order by. So we're going to order it by the name field, okay, alphabetically, okay, starting from A to Z. And then we're going to just limit it to the last 100 for now, okay. If you don't want to limit, you can also, right? But for now, I'm just going to limit it. Add snapshot listener. Okay. So here, let's name the parameter snapshot and error. Okay. First, let's use guard let snapshot. So if the snapshot exists, continue. If not, we're going to print an error. Error fetching snapshot and then just print the error dot localized description. Error. Okay, and in here we're going to just return if the snapshot is nil. And then let's declare let docs. Let's get the snapshot dot documents. Here let's invoke uh, declare let items and then on the docs let's info compact map so on the closure let's just use try optional and then use this dollar zero the data you can use this data as and remember that the inventory item conforms to the codable which means conform to the decodable okay so we can just convert the data to inventory item dot self okay that is optional and then it will just remove all the optional in here using this compact map okay and then we can just update the ui using the width animation so it will have a subtle animation see if you are any default animation so that items equal to the new items from the snapshot listener okay so this is it for the inventory list view model which will be used both on the iOS and Vision as target okay next one is let's create a extension just a simple extension in here for string giving a name of string plus extension for both target so this just will be a very simple one create an extension of string that confirm to error and localize error this is makes it easier to just throw a string letter without initializing an error and as error object okay so in here let's just record this error description and return self okay i think these are all the shared source files for both the ios and the vision os targets now first let's focus on building the ios application first so inside this XCA inventory tracker IS target, let's create a folder using the name of views. Inside this views folder, create a new save UI view. In here, make sure to only select XCA inventory tracker IS target, okay? And give it a name of uh, inventory list view. This is only for the IS target. Create. And first, I'm going to put the preview inside a navigation stack. Okay. Okay, we got the preview shown. Let's begin the implementation. The first thing is to declare a state 
object far vm and then initialize it with the inventory list view model okay and next one let's replace this placeholder hello world text with a list and for now let's take a for each passing the vm dot items inventory item array and then item in in here inside the for each let's just use a text to show the name of the item for now and let's add a navigation title modifier so i'm going to just give it a name of exia ar inventory and let me add an on appear modifier and then in here i'm just going to info listen to items okay right now we don't have any item inside our firestore database so let's create a stop first navigate to the firestore local emulator ui here is the address okay so this is the emulator suite ui let me select five store so click start collection for the collection i'm going to give it a name of items okay this is document id so let's begin creating document so the field the first field is id let's copy this as the value second one is created at and let's select the type to timestamp and third one is updated at okay this is also timestamp and now name string just give it a name you want just give it a value of xbox controller and finally we have the quantity the number set the type as number and let me set it to one okay so id created at updated at name and quantity let me save okay so this is inside the items collection we have this document and here's the fields so let's see in the preview nice as you can see the xbox controller is now shown okay this able to listen to the snapshot updates in real time amazing right it's all using the preview now let's begin declaring a inventory item view struct so let's declare a struct inside the same file give it a name of inventory list item view okay it's a view and then in here we will have the flat item inventory item okay so in here let's replace this text with the inventory list item view let's pass the item in here okay let's start implementing the body so let's take our edge tag here and set the alignment to top with the spacing of 16 and let's take a uh, free stack set the alignment alignment to leading and let's set the, the correct text item dot name set the font to headline and next one let's set a uh, text passing quantity Let's just use string interpolation to convert the item the quantity okay, to string. Now let's set the font for this to sub headline. Okay, so beside this fee stack, we're going to declare edge stack in here. C stack story. And then here I'm just going to give it a background of rounded rectangle with the corner radius, corner radius of eight okay and then i'm going to set the foreground style to 
color dot gray with opacity of 0.3 okay we have that and let me scroll a bit and then in here I'm going to add an let me add a frame first uh, I'm going to just give a width of 150 and height of 150 we will show the thumbnail in here okay right now we don't have a thumbnail so let's just use if let thumbnail URL okay with it exists in the item we're going to just use the save UI async image so we're going to use this one okay with the async image face let's pass the thumbnail URL so give it a name of face in here let's use switch face okay so basically in here I just want to get the success case so in case it is success I'm going to render the image adding the resizable modifier and then set the aspect ratio passing the content mode as fit okay and then I'm just going to use a default case for the other cases for default I'm just going to show a progress view okay that's it and then also in the edge tag I want to add a border around the frame okay I'm going to use overlay for this I'm just going to assign it with the rounded rectangle with the corner radius of 8 okay and then adding a stroke for the stroke I'm going to just pass color dot gray dot capacity 0 dot 3 and then add a line width of 1 yeah I think this looks good there should be a border here with the line width of 1 okay yeah looks good we have implemented this we don't have the thumbnail uh, as of now but it will be shown later as we upload the USDC and also generate the thumbnail using the quick look thumbnail framework and the next thing I'm going to add several modifier as well in here first I want to just hide the row separator for each of the item passing this hidden and then I want to set the content shape to rectangle so this will make sure all of this blend space here white space can be also tapped by setting the content shape and I'm going to add a on tap gesture so for now we won't be doing anything but later we will add a code where it will present the form edit form view okay that's it for the initial implementation of the inventory list view next let's begin to implement the inventory form view where the user can add or edit an item okay inside this views folder create a new save ui view give it a name of inventory form view okay make sure to select only the ios target for this create okay let me embed this inventory form view in the preview inside the navigation stack okay now Oh, I just noticed this. It should be observables, not observables for the shared word. Okay, and now on the iOS target, let's create also the observe observables. Okay, observables folder, and then inside the observables folder, create uh, create a new save file. Give the name of inventory form vm okay this is only for the ios target okay create in here just import save ui and declare a class inventory form view model okay make it conform to the observe 
uh, observable object and then let's go back to the inventory form view for now let's look at a state object far vm and then initialize it with the inventory form view model okay now let's go back to the inventory form view model so we need to declare several enum to represent the state first one is i want to declare an enum to differentiate between whether we are currently adding a new item or editing a current item so let me declare an enum form type okay let it conform to the identity available as well and then we have the case add and second one is edit for edit we have an associated item of inventory item okay so i set this to identity available so we can present it present it using the cvi sheet view and then let's just declare the id string let's use switch on the self in case of add just return us record string of add for edit edit record it and then hyphen and then let's use the associate value inventory item dot id for the edit okay next one is i want to have an enum to represent a loading state we will have several loading state later okay so let's just declare the enum enum loading type for this i want to make this conform to the equitable protocol and for the initial loading types cases let's just declare none and saving item okay now let's declare several import at the top for the first one is firebase uh firestore and then firebase storage save ui and also quick loop thumbnail that we were going to use to generate the terminal later and now let's declare several properties initial properties for this inventory form view model first one is db just assign it to the firestore.firestore and then next form type is going to be let okay form type next let's declare an id this will be the id of the item and let's declare several published property that we can bind later to the ui published first one is name this will be for the tech, name text field and then publish far quantity this is for the stepper letter just as i need the default value of zero and then let's also have publish far uzdz url this will be the uzdz url remote url and then publish for thumbnail url this will be also for the thumbnail remote url and next declare a publish for loading state and then let's assign it with the loading 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 type dot none okay and next is publish for error for error i'm just going to use a optional string okay next let's declare a navigation title computed property here let's just use switch on the form type for the add i'm just going to return add item for the edit we don't need the shared value you can just return edit item for the navigation title okay now let's continue implement the initializer so for the initializer it's going to assign a just a form type okay with the default value of form type add so basically in here i'm going to assign self dot form type with the form type from the parameter and then i'm going to use switch from form type okay 
in case of add i'm going to set the uid by generating a new uid string for edit i'm just going to let me just rename this to item set the id with the item.id okay and then set the name with the item.name and set the quantity with item.quantity and also if the uzdz uh, link and if let if let the uzdz url exist in here just going to assign the uzdz url with the uzdz url from the item as well as the thumbnail url okay the item thumbnail url exists just assign the local thumbnail url in the observable object with the one from the item so basically we just copy this to the prop published properties okay so it can bind to the ui the inventory form view letter next one before we implement the input section the view let's take a save method in here and then just make it throwing okay first one i want to set the loading state to saving item okay and set the error to nil and then in going to see in here and then in here i'm going to just invoke at a differ in here not info a differ loading state that not okay so it's always reverting back the loading state to none when it finished this method and let me declare far item inventory item here we need to switch on the form type again so in case of add i'm just going to initialize a new item here i'm going to pass the id from the id from this view model and then for the name as well from the published property and the quantity okay and then next one for the item in here i'm going to assign it with the inventory item from the associated value and then i'm going to assign the name with the name and then item the quantity with the quantity also for the uzdz link okay remember this is the one that storing the property not the uzdz url url is just a uh, computed value based on this link in here we can use the uzdz url publish property and then get the absolute string as well as the thumbnail link thumbnail url from the view model and then get the absolute string okay and now let's look at our do try catch block the catch i'm just going to assign the error with the error dot localize description and then i'm just going to throw the error in here and then in the do i'm just going to invoke try db dot document so we need to specific document path first one is the collection it's going to be items okay and then the document id which is the item dot id so that's the document path that we are going to save to this document and then invoking set data so let's use this one from the encodable remember that the inventory item already confirmed to the codable which means it also confirms to the encodable so we can pass the item and then for the merge we're just going to pass through okay so basically if the document does not exist it will create it in the collection if it exists it will merge the field that we also set in the property in here okay this looks good we have implemented the save method so now we can move and implement the inventory form view input section as well as the submit save button now next navigate to the inventory form view and in here we can start by declaring 
far input section and then some view for now let's just click our text with an empty string and in the body we can begin by declaring a form form okay and then inside the form we have a list and then we have the imp and then we have the input section okay now let's begin implementing the input section okay we have the preview rendered now so we can begin implementing the input section so declare a section in here and declare a text field so for the title give it a title of name for the binding we can just use this binding from the vm and bind it to the name publish property and next one let's declare a stepper okay for the title it's going to be quantity and then let's also display the vm dot quantity in the title the stepper and then after that we can use the pass the uh, value passing the binding of vm dot quantity which is the an integer okay it is rendered the item and now i'm going to add a disable modifier to disable those text field and stepper in case the loading state loading state is not equal to none okay so if it is loading or doing something we will disable the text field now let's continue on the body the list inside the form so after the form let's declare a toolbar add a toolbar modifier to the form and then we will have the toolbar item the first toolbar item with the placement of cancellation so for this we will just dismiss this uh, form sheet so we need the environment value of dismiss an action that dismiss the current presentation let's give it a name of is miss okay in here let's just declare a button with the title of cancel and then inside the closure just invoke dismiss we're going to also disable this in case the loading state is not equal to none okay that's the first toolbar item the second one is toolbar item the placement of confirmation action in here let's declare a button with the title of save and in the closure let's declare a do try catch in the catch we won't be doing anything but in the do we will be invoking pm.save okay so it is successfully saved without throwing an error we're going to just dismiss this uh, ship okay to go back to the list inventory item list and now let's also add a disable modifier for the save button we want to disable it if the loading state is not equal to none uh, or we also need to add or the name dreaming characters in white space and new lines is empty so if the name text field is empty we want to also disable it next one let's add a navigation title just passing the navigation title computed property okay looks good there and then for this i just want to set the display mode for the title navigation bar title to inline okay now let's also add the alert to display the error and then let's use this is percented passing a binding let's just initial a custom binding in here for the get just return vm not equal to error okay in case it is vm dot error not equal to nil we're going to show this alert and in the set ignore the parameter and set the vm dot error back to nil okay and then in here let's set the error to a this will be the title of the alert an error has occurred 
okay and then we have the actions so for the actions itself we won't be having anything and next one is the message for the message we can simply look at text and then pass the vm dot error in case it is empty just pass an empty string okay can confirm field there's text argument type i think the actions we need to add this uh empty uh, just ignore the parameter okay of course there's a one expected parameter in here just ignore that as we are not using anything in actions okay now looks good i know the syntax for the alert modifier can be a bit tricky okay so just follow along okay this will basically the title and this will basically the subtitle in the message and then inside the alert we don't have any button okay we have the alert the navigation bar title now before i forget let's navigate back to the entry point of the irs app and then in here let's just replace this content view with the navigation stack and pass the inventory list view now we can just remove this content view as we are not going to use it in this application now let's navigate to the inventory list view let's declare a state in here far form type it will be an optional form type and then in here we can basically for the on tag gesture inside the for each set the form type with edit in case passing the item as the associated value okay now we also need to declare a toolbar right to add the item toolbar just going to use toolbar item with the placement of a primary action i think then just add a button plus item for the title and then in the closure just uh, set the form type to add okay so now to present this the sheet we need to bind the form type state okay so above the on appear let's add another modifier which is a sheet okay let's use this item for the item let's pass the binding of form type state and for the content let's pass up just closure here so this is the form type parameter and then inside the closure we can just simply set the the current navigation stack and then declare the inventory form view we need to pass the view model and then initialize it with the type okay looks good so far now let's add several uh, modifiers for this sheet item let's set the presentation details okay the height of this to be a fraction of 0.85 of the screen so it doesn't cover the whole screen and then let's disable the interactive dismiss so the user won't be able to drag it down they need to uh, tap on the cancel button inside the sheet to dismiss it okay let's try this tap ah nice percent the uh, navigation uh, the form sheet with the type of add so in here let me just type anything item a set the quantity to maybe three click save ah looks good now let's uh, edit tap on the existing item nice it present this edit item where we can change this b set the quantity to two save it again okay so let's test the cancel okay cancel also works 
nice as you can see it uh, disabled now we are able to add an item edit existing item the name and the quantity and it's also she will be reflected in the fire uh fire store local emulator right we have two items right now okay that's it for the initial implementation of the inventory form view next we are going to implement the uzdz upload in the inventory form uh, view so before that let's navigate back to the inventory form view model so now we need to declare several enums again to help us represent the states for the uzdz upload feature so let's declare an enum first one is the uzdz source type so we have two source type first one is the file importer and then the second one is the object capture in this video we're going to implement the file importer object capture uh, photogrammetry we're going to implement that in the next video okay and then let's go another enum upload type okay make this confirm to the equitable and then we have two first one is the uzdz file and the second one is the thumbnail image of the uzdz now we need to go back to the loading type at the third state case in this case it's going to be up uploading state and then we have a associated value of the upload type so it can be either uzdz or thumbnail next one i want to also declare a struct upload progress okay so we will show the upload progress fraction completed the size total size and the current completed size as well in bytes okay so let's look at far fraction completed this will be double and then total unit count okay the total size of the file that we are going to upload and the completed unit count it's also going to be integer 64 sign integer okay we have all the enums now scroll back to the top and let's begin by declaring several published properties as well for this so publish far upload progress so make this optional and then publish far show uz dz source this is for presenting the action sheet selection the file value will be false and then publish far selected uz dz source okay this will be uz dz source type of optional okay it can be either a file importer or the object capture now also below this Let's declare a lab here byte count formatter. So we're going to format the byte here using this byte count formatter provided in the iOS. Okay, so for this, let's make this lazy and the closure. Let's just uh, initialize the current lab f and then initialize a byte count for matter okay and then set the count style so the unit of the byte size it's going to be file okay special specifies display of file byte counts okay and then just return f so basically we're just going to pass the completed unit count and the total unit count to this byte count formatter so it can represent it in a formatted uh, byte count format we have all these published properties now we just need to implement the method in here let's make this uh, the main actor so it can be executed in the ui thread and this is going to be a uh, uh, async method so give a name of upload uzdz okay so it's going to pass a local url file url containing the location of the uzdz file that currently save in the file directory 
and it's going to be async okay so let's begin the implementation this method is going to be quite big as we are going to upload to firebase storage as well as generating the thumbnail and upload the thumbnail as well okay let's begin the implementation of this so basically the file url that will be passed in here it will be from the file importer save ui uh, api and to access that file url we need to basically check so let's declare a got access lab here and then we're going to invoke file url start accessing security scope resource so given a url created by resolving a bookmark data created with a security scope make the resource referenced by the url accessible okay so this will uh, make the url accessible for us to access so we need to check guard got access this is a boolean okay and then let's just uh, initialize the data using this file url okay using the data contents of passing the file url so in case we are not able to access the file url and initial the data we're going to just return okay and now we can invoke file url stop accessing security scope resource so it will revoke the access granted to that url okay so this is recommended by the apple documentation on how can access the data from the CVR file importer and after that we're going to set the upload progress publish property we're going to initialize it setting the fraction completed to zero setting the fraction completed to zero total unit count to zero and complete unit count to zero as well and set the loading state for this to uploading with the upload type of UZDZ. Okay, now we're going to add a defer here to reset the loading state back to none before the method completes. Okay, let's begin. This can be a quick long, so let's do a do catch block here. And then in the catch block, let's just assign the error with the error dot localized description so it can be shown in the alert sheet okay so the first thing that we are going to do is to upload to firebase storage right exactly to be upload usd z to firebase storage so let's declare a storage ref the reference of the location where we want to put it in the bucket where the storage bucket so let's use the storage dot storage and then get the root reference of the bucket here and because i use dz ref and then we're going to just use the storage root ref and then add a child so for the location we're just going to put it at the root and for the path i'm just going to pass the file name i'm going to use the id the item and then add the usdz extension and then i want to invoke try await okay usdz ref this is a storage reference from the firebase storage api and then invoking put data async okay put data async let's use this and let's pass the data and for the metadata, I'm going to initialize a dictionary. So the key will be content type. And the value will be model slash vnd dot usd plus zip. Okay, this is recommended by from the UCDC documentation that I read. And then it's going to also give us the on progress which is a closure so it's going to pass our progress in here so first let's make weak self in here and then use guard let self let progress progress is also optional 
okay and then return yes it failed continuing on let's just set the upload progress publish property initialize it with the progress dot fraction completed progress dot total unit count and progress dot completed unit count so this actually return an url this uh, put data async method but in this case i'm just going to ignore that fail okay so we are not going to use it now uh, we need to ask firebase uh, storage api to give us the download url for this uh, usdz reference right so to do that we need to got a download url and info try with uzdz ref dot download url so this will retrieve a long life download url with a revocable token so it will just give the token as well so it can be accessed from the browser or anything else okay but we can revoke the the, the token as well from the firebase console if you want okay so let's do it get the download url so after we got the download URL, we already got the UCDC uh, URL that we can assign to the published property. But before that, I want to also generate a thumbnail. Okay. So the thumbnail itself is optional, and we will ignore any error in case it happens. Okay. So for the general thumbnail, first we need to get the cache directory URL. For this, let's ask the file manager default URLs for cache directory okay, in user domain mask. Let's just grab the first one using the force and wrap. So I'm pretty sure we have the cache directory always in the iOS app. And then after we got the cache directory from the system for this app, let's declare a file cache URL. And then use cache dir url appending okay let's use this one appending path so basically what we are going to do is to uh, persist this uh, ucdc file to a cache directory so it can be used to generate the thumbnail using the gl terminal generator api so let me just save the file here using the id dot usdz to this file cache url and basically we can just invoke try data so it's going to be optional write to data so in this one should be the instance write to the file cache url okay continuing on we need to declare a thumbnail request so for this we can just use tl thumbnail generator thumbnail generator dot request and then using this file at so as you can see in here we cannot just pass the data we need to pass a file url so that's why i create that file cache url and write data to that location Okay, so let's pass the file cache URL and for the size of the image just going to set it to 300 by 300 and for the scale I'm just using the current screen scale for the representation types just going to pass all okay so we have the thumbnail request now now let's use if let thumbnail let's just use try optional wait then use this tl thumbnail generator dot shared so this is a singleton and then info generate best representation for okay this is an async drawing method and then pass the thumbnail request constant that we have created Okay, continuing on, let's grab the GPG data in here. To grab that, we can just use this thumbnail, kill thumbnail representation, and then invoke this UI image and invoke JPEG data. Let's compress it, pass 0 
we don't know, we don't need the best quality so at least we can make the file smaller right? using the compression quality of 0.5 i think it will still looks good enough for the thumbnail and then here let's change the loading state to uploading upload tab will be thumbnail okay continuing on let's set the thumbnail ref for the firebase storage using the storage ref dot child in here i'm just going to use the id again the item and just add the dot gpg extension gpg extension and then ignore the value and then invoke try await thumbnail graph invoking put data async okay in here we need to pass jpeg data and then for the metadata just initialize it a dictionary for the key content type and for the value it's going to be image slash gpeg okay and then in the progress just grab the progress again just use this guardlet again the self and the progress turn and then in here let's say the upload progress with the skin it as in progress dot fraction completed progress dot total unit count progress dot completed unit count okay and then in here we need to set the self to weak weak self okay then basically here we can just use if let thumbnail url call to try optional await so thumbnail ref dot asking the donor url for the token from the firebase storage so in case we got the thumbnail download url we're just going to set the thumbnail url for this property with the thumbnail url so this will be the remote url and then in here okay so not inside this if let thumbnail right so let's set the uzdz url with the download url okay i think everything looks good now so basically this is the method to upload the uzdz so get the file get the data and then construct the storage uzdz reef set it with this uh, metadata and then get the download url and basically generate the thumbnail as well and also get the thumbnail url in here and then set the publish property best for the thumbnail url and the ucdc url and as you can see in the save method right in the save method we are assigning this item the ucdc link with this ucdc url that absolute string and the thumbnail link with the thumbnail url that absolute string so that's it for the upload UCDC method. It's a bit long, but yeah, that's the implementation. Now we can move back to the inventory form view. Okay, navigate to the inventory form view. So basically in here, uh, I think let's put this uh, below the toolbar. We need to add the several modifier for this. So the first one is the confirmation dialog in here. With the title of add UZDZ for the express method. Let's pass the binding of VM dot show UZDZ source. And for the actions, let's just pass the button. With the title of select file in here let's select the vm that selected using this source to file importer and the next one we have a button for the object capture here let's set the selected using this source to object capture 
in here I want to also add a title facility to uh, visible okay all looks good for the confirmation dialog next one we need to also add a file importer modifier to import the file we're going to use this one okay for the binding we need to pass this custom init get set for the get it should be a uh, few model the selected usdc source equal to file importer so only when the selected usdc source value is file importer this will be presented and in the set just ignore the parameter and set the vm that selected usdc source back to nil and for the alt content type in here i'm just going to and for the alt content type i'm just going to pass ut type dot UZDZ. So to access this UZD type dot UZDZ, we need to also import uniform type identifiers. Okay. And then in the on, and then in the on completion in here, we grab the result which is an uh, enum, and then use the switch statement in here. Okay, for the success, let's name it as URL. And then let's uh, switch to the async context using the task detach in here. And then invoke await.vm upload uzdz passing the URL. It's given from the success closure. And then for the failure, let's just set the fam.error to failure.localize description. Okay, this looks good now. We have implemented the confirmation dialog and the file importer. And next one, I also want to declare an extension in here to for the UI application. Basically, I want to get the UI window for this application so that I can use it to present a Safari view controller to view the UZDZ in app. Okay. Let's just give it a name of first key window. UI window. Optional. Okay. For this, uh, for this, we can grab it from the UI application. Dot shared. Dot connected scenes. And then we're going to use compact map. Casting it as the ui window sin and then going to filter it with the activation state equal to foreground active so only the active one and then get the first one and access the key window property so that will be the window of the ios app it's a bit complicated but it should work okay and then next one in here, I want to declare a func view uh, ar given the URL. In here, I'm going just going to declare Safari VC SF Safari view controller. But before we can access that, we need to import Safari services. Okay. SF Safari view controller for the URL just pass the URL from the param and then the crawl VC and then we can use your application dot shared singleton and then use the extension first key window and grab the root view controller dot percentage view controller or this uh, fallback to UI application dot shared. So if there's no percentage view controller, we just use the first key window dot root view controller. Okay, it's a bit tricky, but this should help us to present the Safari VC in app. Okay, and then just uh, info VC dot present passing the Safari 
CC. And then animated true. Okay, now we can begin implementing the AR section. So let's declare a var here. AR section. Some view. Let's just put a text. Empty text for now. And then just declare this below the input section in the form list. So let's declare a section with a title of AR model. So the first one we're going to check if the thumbnail URL exists in the view model. We're going to use async image passing the URL of the thumbnail. And then we're going to get the image face. Here we're going to just use switch face for we don't need empty. For success, we can just pass uh, image.resizable and I also want to set the aspect ratio to content mod fit and set the frame max width to infinity and max height limited to maximum of 300. Okay, in case of failure, I'm just going to real text, fail to page thumbnail. And for the default, just going to show a progress view. So I think for failure, we can simply ignore the associated error failure. We are not going to use it. Next one is Below this applet terminal URL, let's get the UZDZ URL from the VM. If it exists, I'm going to declare a button here. In this case, I'm going to use action label. For the action, I'm just going to invoke VUR passing the UZDZ URL. So this will open it in a Safari view controller inside the app. And for the label, I'm just going to return of hashtag using an SF symbol system name. I'm going to use AR kit for the SF symbol and set the image scale, scale to large. And then beside that, I'm going to just add a text view. So for this, I'm going to add a layout else for the if let use this URL. So in case if use this URL doesn't exist. I'm going to add a button with the action label as well. For the action, I'm going to show the set the show UZDZ source to true so the user can add an UZDZ select it from the file importer or the object capture. And for the label, just copy this from above, paste this, and change the text to add. UZDZ. Okay, that's the else. If in case UZDZ doesn't available, then the user should be able to add the UZDZ. In case it exists, it should be able to view it. Okay, but also in the async image, I want to add an on tap gesture basically in here. And I just want to grab the UZDZ URL as well. So if the user just tap on the image, Terminal, I'm just going to also invoke this view in the Safari passing the UZDZ URL. Okay. Okay, then what else? So, okay, then below the else block, in here, we're going to check if the progress from the vm.upload progress exists. We're going to get it and wrap it. And then in fogging case let uploading grab the type upload type 
equal to VM loading state. So basically, if the VM loading state is uploading, get drop the associated value and at the progress dot total unit count is larger than zero. Okay, in this case, we want to declare a v stack and then inside the v stack, we're going to use the progress view passing value of progress dot fraction completed in here and then the view provider just going to record text parsing uploading here i'm going to check the type from the shade value if it is uzdz i'm just going to show the uzdz string if not then that must be a thumbnail right file and then continuing on i'm going to use string interpolation to just convert this integer passing progress dot fraction completed and then multiply it by 100 and then add the person sign okay then below this progress view i'm going to add a text using string interpolation again just going to use the byte count what matter scroll let me scroll and then in fox string from string from byte count in here we already have the byte count from the progress dot completed unit count okay okay and then add the slash in here using string interpolation again vm dot byte count formatter string from byte count here i'm going to pass progress dot total unit count okay this will show the current progress the fraction completed as well as the completed unit count slash total unit count okay so the user is not going to feel anxious waiting for the upload to finish right we're going to show the upload state in here in terms of the percentage and the completed unit count in bytes formatted bytes file okay and then basically i also want to disable every button interaction in here in case the loading state is inequal not equal to none okay we don't want to user to tap the upload again right in case the it is currently uploading a file okay so we're going to disable it when the loading state is not equal to none okay now we have the add uzdz section in here and to test that we're going to basically need a real if iphone device so we need to run this on the real iPhone device uh, because we are not able to preview the UZDZ file using a simulator, okay? So prepare your iPhone device for this and then run it. Now let me select my iPhone in here, Alfian's iPhone, okay? And then I'm going to build. We need to wait a bit. It's going to build everything okay the build succeeded attaching and then installing to my iphone let's see still waiting installing okay i have the app runs as you can see here i'm using a quick time preview for mir mirroring this okay we have the xbox controller let me tap on this and then let me tap on the add uzdz Okay, it presents the action sheet, select file or the object capture. So I'm going to select the file importer. Nice, it presents this file export importer window. Let me select my Xbox controller UZDZ. Okay, it's uploading. Nice, the progress there. Wow, <laughs> that is amazing, right? Okay, so we have the thumbnail as well in here. And we have the view. So let me tap. So open the Safari view controller. So let me tap as well on this. Let's wait a bit. Okay, we got the object here. So I can play around. So I can put it here. I can scale it. And I can also see the object 
preview so that it okay okay also i can share it there so let me close this close the safari window and there you go we have the thumbnail and let me save this nice as you can see in the list we have the thumbnail rendered on this so we have implemented the upload UZDZ feature for our XCAR inventory tracker in iOS. Amazing, amazing. So let me stop the debug for now. Now let's continue. Let me close down the console. And now we're going to implement the delete UZDZ uh, feature delete UZDC and delete item okay so to do that let's navigate to the inventory form view model again we need to declare several enum to help us again in the state management so first let's declare a enum of delete type okay so there are two types of item Deletion, which is the UZDZ with thumbnail, okay, and the actual inventory item. Now we just need to add a national case in the loading type to deleting, and then pass the lab type for the uh, associated value, okay. If you see here. This is very nice, right? We have a enum loading type. It represents several state. None. Saving item, uploading, deleting. So we only have one single variable to represent the loading state in our form. Okay. It helps us to manage the state of the UI. Okay. Now let's begin. Go to the here to the inventory form view model. Let's declare a main actor method here. Fun delete UZDZ. So let's make this async. In here, let's grab the storage reference using var, uh, storage dot storage dot reference. This is the root and UZDZ ref. Maybe I should put it inside a method, right? But for now, let's just type this. Maybe if you want, you can clean up the code a bit. I think there are some code that got repeated in the upload UCDC method and this del UCDC. And then thumbnail ref. For the thumbnail ref, we already know it's going to be the root and then it's going to be the ID. And for the extension, it's going to be GPG. Okay. And now let's say the loading state to the lighting. Passing UZDZ with thumbnail. And let's also add a defer loading state to reset it to none before this uh, method completes. And then let's declare do try catch block. In the catch just set the error to error.localize description. And in the do, you can simply invoke try wait uz dz ref dot the lab okay so this is async throws okay but for the thumbnail itself i want to make this try optional okay so in case it fail i just am going to ignore that okay this is maybe a knife implementation but for now let's just do it if you don't want you can also set up a fair based function so in to detect this UZDZ ref got deleted in the document. You can trigger a function to also delete the thumbnail. Okay, but for now we're just going to do this in the app. Okay, there's a lot of possibility for the cleanup if you want. Okay, and then set the UZDZ URL to nil. Set the thumbnail URL to nil. Okay. Okay. Now we have the the UZDZ, and finally let's declare um, an actor. This is for the deletion of the inventory item itself. I'm going to make this as intros. First one is the loading state to delete deleting item. 
and then in here i'm going to set the catch to try catch block in case is uh throwing an error set the rolling state to none and then throw the error in the do i'm just going to invoke try await and then get the documents path which is the items collection and then using string collection get the pass the document id and then just invoke the lab in here okay so the other one i'm just going to copy this one then change to storage dot storage dot reference dot show dot user easy and then invoke the lab notice that the try is optional in there so i just want to ignore in case it fails and also the thumbnail image okay so basically if this completes without an error i will just dismiss the sheet from the view itself Okay, we need to add a weight itself. This method is an async method. Okay, that's it for the inventory form view model for the duration logic. Now let's go back to the inventory form view and then scroll to the AR section. And then inside this if let use this URL below this uh, view AR button. Let's declare another button in here. The lat UZDZ and then let's set the role to destruct if and then invoke task with pm dot uzdz okay okay that's it for the uzdz button deletion now let's scroll back to the top so below this ar section let's look at if case deleting okay so the current case for the vm.loading state is deleting let's grab the type as well and then the as stat i'm going to just show a coordinates uh, between a spacer the free stack with the spacing of zero uh eight and then just show a progress view it's performing the deletion and then just showing a text deleting so again using string interpolation the type is equal with the uzdz with thumbnail it must be deleting the uzdz if not it must be the uh, item i think this should be uzdz file okay and then set the foreground style to red red color okay that is showing the deleting progress and next one if the case of the vm the form type is delete so only in case the form type is uh, edit okay i'm going to show the delete button okay with the role of the struct this i'm going to just uh kick off a uh, detached task to switch to async context and then using a do try catch the catch just print the error with the error i send the vm.error with the error locus description and in do just invoke try await vm dot the lab item okay and then i'm just going to dismiss the form sheet in case there's no error got thrown means the item already got deleted from the firestore db right now let's try this i'm going to use my device again to test let's build okay the build succeeded okay i have the app runs on my iphone here shown in the quick time mirroring but before we delete that actually i made a mistake here when we save the document here so in here we should not pass the merge as true right because if we set this to nil, it won't be deleted, okay? So any value that we don't include won't be get updated. 
So in this case, if this we set this to nil, it won't be updated. Okay, so that's why we just want to override it. So just remove this merge through, and then basically it will just override every uh, the document. Okay. So now make sure to rebuild. Run it again. Okay. Now we can try the deletion. Okay. So if you see here the simulator uh, store local emulator we have the thumbnail link and the ucdc link so let's begin by deleting the ucdc okay and then save it okay the image got uh, removed there the preview and as you can see thumbnail link and the ucdc link got removed as well nice right now let's try deleting the item so just tap delete in here boom the form sheet got dismissed and the item got removed as well in the Firestore local emulator. So that's it for the deletion feature. We have successfully implemented every feature I think on iOS. The inventory list, inventory form, uh, inputting the name, the quantity, uploading the UCDC, deleting the UCDC, generating the thumbnail image. And yeah, that's it for the iOS application. Now we can just stop the debugger here and we can focus now in the next part which is implementing the Vision OS application. Okay, let's continue. Let's open the project navigator, select Excel inventory tracker vision, the vision OS target, and let's create a new folder in here, views, and create a new if UI view, give it a name of inventory list view and in here make sure only the axia inventory tracker vision OS target is selected okay and now to enable the preview i'm just going to change the scheme to the axia inventory tracker vision okay nice we have the preview shown wow looks nice right and first thing is i want to go to the action inventory tracker vision os app and in here i'm going to the navigation stack the window group and then replace this content view with the inventory list view okay it's the initial window for our vision os app and i can simply delete this content view okay let me put this at the top looks good now let's go to the inventory list view okay now i'm going to change the skin here i want to use the living room night okay make it a bit darker okay looks good so let's begin implementing the inventory list view so the first thing is to import reality kit we're going to use it later and let's take a state object in here far vm and then initialize it with the inventory list view model and then also in the preview i'm going to embed the inventory list view inside a navigation stack okay this looks good now let me declare a scroll view at the root of the body and then we're going to use a lazy figrid we're going to pass our columns of grid item array so in here let me add a private let uh, grid items and then inside we just set the type to grid item grid item and then just initialize with a single item of here i'm going to use adaptive grid item with the minimum size of 240 okay and just ignore the maximum this is the default value i'm going to set the spacing to 
16. Okay, we have the grid items. Now we can simply pass this grid items to the lazy V grid. And then in the content, let's replace the current placeholder. In the content, let's just use for a uh, for each passing vm dot items. And then the free provider just get the item in. And for now, let's just use the correct text item dot name. Okay. And then I don't on drag. For the on track, let's just put a template in this item provider for now. And then in the scroll view, uh, and then in the lazy V grid itself, I'm going to add a vertical padding using the default uh, size. And then I'm going to add a horizontal padding of 30. Okay. And going to set the navigation title to XCA, XCA AR inventory you can set it any anything you want for the title depending on your preferences maybe your own app right then on the on up here let's attach the listeners to the faster database okay we have this item B right? so currently if you see we only have one item Nice, disabled to sync the item mm, properly using the preview. Okay, so now let's also declare a struct inventory list item view. Okay, it's going to be a view. So let's go to our lab item, which is going to be uh, the inventory item. Okay, and in here, let me replace this text with the inventory list item view, passing the item. Okay, let's begin implement the body. So for the body, I'm just going to use a button action label. Okay, let's ignore the action closure for now and then implement the label. Let's begin. And first, I want to set the button style for this button to be borderless. And I want to set the button border shape to be rounded rectangle with a radius of 20. Now, inside the label, I'm going to declare a VStack. And then just declare the item, the name, and text. Also the quantity, just going to use the string interpolation here, passing item dot quantity, quantity, okay. Nice, it is rendered there. And I'm going to set the VStack frame, I'm going to just hard code it to 240 for the width and also 240 for the height. And I'm going to add a padding of 32. Okay, now we have this. Now, above the item name, I'm going to declare a C stack. Okay. This C stack, I'm going to check the UZDZ URL from the item, inventory item. If it exists, exist, I'm going to use the reality kit model 3D. A few that asynchronously load and display a 3D model. Okay. So it accepts the URL. So luckily this model 3D accepts a remote URL. Okay, so we can just pass the download URL here. Containing the five star uh five base storage download URL, right? And then it's going to pass us the model face. So this is actually an enum in similar to the async image face in Swift UI. So in here, in case, so in here, I just want to ignore the empty case. And for the success case, I'm going to just rename it as model for the shade value. And then info model rot resizable. And set the aspect ratio to content mode 
fit okay now give me one second i want to upload the UZDZ file for this item so it can be previewed xbox controller select file xbox controller and then going to save it okay okay now let me set the for the failure case i'm just going to clean a text failure to download 3d model okay and for the default just show a progress view indicator okay and then we can just ignore this error right we don't need it now as you can see it is rendering the <laughs> xbox controller <laughs> the user easy model right amazing <laughs> this is so so nice right the official os it's, like, it's a revolutionary interaction that we have been waiting for i think okay in the else block if there is no user easy model link i'm just going to declare a corner radius rounded rectangle with the corner radius of 16 and set the foreground style to color dot gray dot opacity of 0 dot 3 then uh, the text not available okay so can create an item let me use my iphone in here some item i want set the ucdc upload the ucdc okay as you can see it is shown the item there amazing right Okay, we have that C stack, one with the user DC model and one without. Amazing. Now let me set the Z stack frame. Okay, I'm going to set it to width of 160 and height of 160. And also I'm going to set the padding bottom to 32. Ah, this looks better, right? So if you see when I hover, it's going to show this. Amazing! This is so good. Can rotate the camera as well if you want. Wow! Looks nice. The inventory list view using the grid. Okay, that's it for the inventory list view for the Vision OS. Amazing. Next, we are going to implement the inventory item view that we are going to open in new window. But before we can implement that, there are several things we need to do. Okay, so inside the XIA inventory tracker vision, let's create a new folder. Give it a name of Observables. Okay, let's put it here below the app. And then inside this, let's create a new Swift file. Give the name of in navigation view model navigation uh, vm okay inside make sure the only division os target is selected okay we will basically use this as an environment object where we can pass data between a different window okay we can simply uh, import swift ui and then declare a Plus navigation view model, make it conform to the observable object, and then just declare a single published property of far selected item. This is going to be the inventory item, it's going to be optional. Okay, so this is the navigation view model. Next, inside the views folder, let's declare a CPUI view. Give the name of inventory item view. Make sure only the vision OS target is selected. Create it. Inside the observables, declare C file. Give it the name of inventory inventory item VM. Okay. Only make sure only vision OS target is selected again. Okay. In here, let's just import a save UI and just declare the class. And just declare the class inventory item view model. Open to the observer 
Adjustable Object. And let's go back to the Inventory Item View in here. We can simply uh, declare the state object. The state object will be uh, named VM, and then we're going to initialize it with the inventory item view model, and then we're going to declare an environment object. So, okay, in here it's going to be the navigation view model. Navigation view model and let's also grab the environment value for dismiss so we can dismiss the this window okay dismiss now let's update the preview in here let's declare a state object Bar navm and then initialize it with the navigation view model. Okay, and then for the navm selected item, let's just initialize an item. Let's just pass an empty uh, name and empty quantity. But for the ID, let's use the ID from the item inside the faster local emulator that we have created in here so I'm going to use this ID for the Xbox controller okay that's the ID and then in the inventory item view I can simply add the return in here and then make sure to inject the environment object passing the nav vm okay now let's navigate back to the entry point the main app for the vision os this one in here we need to declare a state object for the nav vm okay navigation view model initialize it and make sure to inject this to the this uh, inventory list view now vm and then let's declare the second window group so the id for this will be item and then we're going to just declare inventory item view okay make sure to inject the now vm as well Okay, and I'm going to set the window style for this to volumetric. So when we create our volumetric window, it will have a that uh, 3D effect that we can provide in here. Default size. So let's pass one, one uh, for the depth as well. For the unit, we're going to use matters. Okay, so it's going to be one meter for the width height and depth okay looks good now let's navigate back to the inventory list view in the inventory list item item view let me declare several modifier environment object for now vm in here navigation view model and also the environment to open the new window in vision os okay it's provided by the system open window so this is a method that we can just info so in the button under just as simple as select uh, assigning the navm dot selected item with the item in here And then just invoke open window passing the ID of item. Okay. And make sure to also in here to do the same that we have already did in the inventory item view. So let's also have this.
the preview but actually we don't need to assign the selected item we just inject the navvm in here environment object parsing the navvm and make sure to add the return statement okay now to test this we need to use uh, to open a new window we need to use simulator so let's just run the simulator Okay, we have the app running nice we got the item shown in here so let me click it should open a new window volumetric window nice so this is the volumetric window currently it's empty so now the open window does works right and let me just stop the uh, simulator for now and let's move on back to implement the inventory item Let me just resume the preview. Okay, we have the preview running. Okay, now let's navigate to the inventory item view model first. And let's add several import in here. First one is the Firebase Flash Store and then Firebase Storage and CPUI, Reality Kit, and I think that's all. And let's begin by declaring several published properties. First one is the item, which is the inventory item. This is going to be optional. And then the second one, it should be the UZDZ file URL. Okay. So this one will be the local file URL, not the download URL from the UZDZ link from the file store. Okay, and then published file entity. This will be the model entity that we will render in the reality view later. Okay, so I'm going to set this as optional. So I'm going to use Reality View instead of Model 3D because with Reality View we can add multiple gesture recognizer. Because we're going to add a drag gesture for 3D rotation as well as the magnify gesture for scaling the object using the two finger pinch gesture. Okay, and then let me also declare this on item deleted. This is, this is going to be a closure okay with empty uh, without parameter and also void return type okay the default value will be nil and let's be, declare our first method in here so just declare func listen to item okay let's pass the item inventory item first let's assign sub that item with item being passed in here and now let's grab the five store database collection should be items and then the document let's pass the item dot id and then we can simply uh, invoke this add snapshot listener it's going to pass the closure into parameter snapshot and error Okay, let's just use guard let snapshot in here. Else, in case of snapshot is null, let's just clean error, fed error, fetching snapshot. This won't happen, but just in case, right? Localize description, just provide a default value of error string. I'm just going to return in that case. And then if snapshot is not exist means it has been deleted I'm going to invoke self dot on item deleted right so basically the view will dismiss the window okay then here I'm going to to return and finally I'm just going to set the item using try optional snapshot data as Okay, so this accept the decodable, which means we can pass the inventory item dot self. Okay, we have this. Now, to avoid return cycle in here, just pass quick self in here. And let's also unwrap the self. Okay, remember that this is a class, right? Okay, before we move on to the implementing the inventory item view, I want to create a extension for the URL. 
URL plus extension for the vision OS target. So basically, given the URL from the uh, UCDZ link, that's an remote URL, we are going to create a extension that will generate the file cache URL containing the token from the Firebase storage as well as the ID of the item. Okay, that we will persist in the file URL in the cache directory. Why, you ask? It's because to initialize the model entity, it doesn't support remote URL. It only supports the file local URL. Okay, that's the reason. So let's do it now. Let's create an extension URL in here. So give it a name of UZDZ file cache URL. This will be optional. In here, let's just use the correct guard. Lab URL com components. And then initialize a URL components from the from self URL and pass this resolving against base URL to false. Next one is the cache directory URL, which we can get from the default manager that the false URLs for cache directory. Using the main mask on iOS, we can always uh, get the first one. Okay, even on Vision OS, I also test that works. So, in case we cannot get those wave, we just return nil. Next, let's take a token. So, basically, based on the URL components, we can get the query items. So, we can get use this first where the name. For the query key is token. In that case, we're going to get the value. And if it is nil, we just initialize a UUID dot UUID string. So if you see here on the faster right, if I click on this thumbnail link, okay, in here basically it will always have the token the url parameter the query item i mean okay this token this token that we are going to use it as identifier for the file cache okay okay so that's the background of the token so basically in here i just need to put this inside a closure okay i think this should work now we get the token from the query item and now let's construct the file cache url from the cache directory url we're going to invoke append appending path okay so in here for the path i'm going to just use the interpolation use token and then underscore here i'm going to just use the id containing the extension as well which i can get using the last path component of self so this will be the id.uzdz okay so that's the file cache url and finally we can return that file cache url okay so we will use this in two places in the reality view as well in the in the drag item provider letter the main list now let's go back to the inventory item view model and then declare this method with main actor fetch local fetch file URL okay and then with the parameter of the UZDZ URL so this will be the Firebase remote URL Firebase storage and this is going to be an async method okay let's begin implementing this okay for this we can simply check if the UZDZ file URL in the view model that we have declared and then let's compare the UZDZ file URL dot last that component is it equal with the UZDZ URL from the parameter last path component okay if it did access then we can simply just return okay it means the file uh, is same we don't need to refetch it okay if not then we're going to continue and then get the url file cache url using the uzdz url dot 
UCDC file cache URL it will generate it for us and let's we're gonna do try catch basically the idea of this I want to make sure whenever the UCDC item got updated it is able to basically push the previous catch and update it with the new one okay that's the idea and basically in here right inside this listen to item every time we got a new update we're going to check right if the uzdz if the uzdz url from the item dot uzdz url exists right then what we want to do is basically invoke this in a detached task invoking self dot fetch file url passing the uz dc url from the item okay we don't know right whether this got updated or not but if in case it doesn't get updated it will just return if you see in here if it is updated with the new one it will just basically continue to fetch it okay and in the else block in case the item doesn't have the uz dc url we can set the model entity to null it means probably the item UCDC model had, has been deleted okay so we're going to just set the UCDC file URL and the entity to nil so it won't be rendered in case it got deleted and um, I think in here right I think I need to double check this okay this is the USDZ file URL as path component so this is from the view model and then this is from the remote URL I think in here we need to move this guard to the top. Okay. Guard your UCDZ URL, get the UCDZ file cache URL, and then in this case, I'm going to compare this URL. So this one with this, okay? So in case they are same, I'm just going to return. Okay, and then if not, I'm going to continue. I'm going to basically download the data using Firebase storage and put that in the cache directory. Okay, let's uh, continue in the cache block. So in the cache block, let's just set the UZDZ file URL back to nil in case it fail, and then NDD to nil. And now inside the do block, let's just ask the file manager if this file, all right. Let's just add path passing the URL the absolute string. If the file uh, does not exist, we need to download it, right? So to do that, we can simply use this Firebase storage storage that storage, and then we can use this reference for URL. Okay, so we can pass the remote URL, right? which is the uzdz url the absolute string okay and we can then write that asynchronously to this file to this local url file okay in the cache directory and then after that we can just initialize the entity using try wait model entity passing the contents of the local the file local URL which is the URL okay and then let's just set the entity the name with item dot uzdz URL dot absolute string okay and then if this and available just send the empty string and then to make the gesture work we need to add this generate collisions shape passing recursive as true and then set the entity dot components invoking set input target component okay this will make the gesture work on the relative view for the model entity and then set the uzdc value url with the URL here and 
solve that entity with the entity okay that's it for the fetch file url implementation okay we also have add this to this uh, below the self item so if the uh, item user this url exists just invoke this fetch file url method okay in case this doesn't change the UCDC file cache URL with the one in the view model in here you just return if not then we'll continue fetching it if it is not available in the cache and then initialize the entity then assign the model entity to the VM entity published property okay let's navigate to the inventory item view we need to implement it okay we have the preview shown let's update the body initials are c stack with the alignment of bottom and then in here i'm going to add a on appear modifier i'm going to use guard lab item i'm going to grab it from the navvm dot selected item Without, it is not available, I'm just going to return it is available, I'm going to set the VM on item deleted, okay, disclosure just invoke, dismiss okay, in case the item snapshot does not exist meaning it's already deleted from the first store and then I can simply invoke VM, listen to item, pass in the item okay, this will listen to real-time updates for this document Okay, in the C stack. Okay, so let's begin by declaring a P stack. I'm going to just invoke VM dot item. This is optional dot name, and provide them the call into string value and text quantity. Just set it to VM dot item dot quantity. And provide the fall failure of zero. Hmm, it looks like this does not work. Doesn't listen to this item. Still showing zero. Probably this card. This item is nil in here. Hmm. Maybe I can try to inject this in the initializer itself. So let's create an initializer. Okay. And then let me move this. Selected item. It's a bit weird. Just pass this in the initializer. Will this work? Ah, this works, right? Wow, that is pretty weird, actually. Not sure why that's the case. Okay, but now it works. It's able to listen to this uh, inventory item with this ID, which is the export controller with the quantity of two. Okay, now let's continue and focus on the body of the view in here i want to set the padding for this fee stack to 32 and set the background to ultra thin material with the corner radius of 16 ah looks good and i want to set the font to extra large title okay and i want to also set the exact index to one okay we have this next next we need to declare reality view for that i need to import reality kit and just declare reality view Okay, we're going to use this make update. It's a bit tricky. So basically the make is the will be invoked initially when the relative view got initialized. Provide the in out relative view content that we can use to add the entity. But in this case, initially we don't have the model entity, right? It's going to fetch it asynchronously. So we don't need the initial make closure. And to update the Reality view, we cannot just use a standard binding mechanism. We need to update it using this update closure. Okay, so this will be invoked in case the view 
got updated with new state. Me zoom out from the simulator a bit. So in here, what I'm going to basically do is just checking if the VM dot entity is nil, right? If it is nil, and not content dot entities is empty, I'm going to remove the entities inside this relative view. Okay. And next, I'm going to check if the entity is there the view model i'm going to add also nested if let if let the current entity content that entities that first we need to be careful right if the our UCDZ got updated we don't want to update at multiple entities inside this uh reality view right so we need to check this entity equal with the current entity so in this case, nothing get changed. We just return, right? And then here, if it is changed, we can remove all the current entity. And then we can invoke add entity. It looks like this doesn't work on the preview. I cannot see the item got rendered in here. I think we should try it on the real simulator. Okay. Not sure why. I think there's nothing wrong with the code so let's just build running it on the simulator okay this is the simulator Let me tap. nice we got the item rendered in the reality view inside here okay looks good I'm not sure why it's not working in the simulator okay but for now it's working in the uh, simulator, so it should be okay. Now let's just ignore the cross the preview for now and work on implementing the gesture recognizer to add the 3D rotation as well as the scale. Okay. Okay. Now let me just close the terminal console, and before I forget. I want to also set the relative view C stack to be same set index. I mean, same with the V stack. Okay. Now we need to implement the gesture recognizer to basically perform the transform 3D transform for the rotation as well as the scale. Okay. For the 3D rotation, we're going to use a drag gesture recognizer. And for the scale, we're going to use the magnify gesture where the user can just pinch right with the two finger to make it larger or smaller. Okay, so let's begin by declaring several proper state in here. Okay, so for the 3D rotation, right? We need four properties actually. First one is the angle. Okay, angle. Let's provide it with the default value of zero degree. And let's also the far start angle. This will be angle optional. And next one we have the start for axis. Okay, the, the axis in x y z the rotation axis. This will be a tuple. With three values, G float, CG float, which is the XYZ. Okay. Set it to zero, zero, zero. And then we also have the start axis. Okay. This will just basically this tuple. But it will be optional. And next for the scale effect. We have the scale. For the scale itself, I'm going to set it to 2 as the default value. And for the start scale, double optional. Okay, it's going to be nil. Let's begin by implementing the drag gesture 
recognizer okay so basically it's here in the okay above the z index let's add the rotation 3d effect we're going to use this one angle and axis okay so let's bind this to the state property angle and axis to perform the rotation 3d effect and then for the scaling we can use the scale effect okay which we can just pass the scale state now for the gesture recognizer let's add the simul simultaneous gesture the first one is the drag gesture okay and then i'm going to add a on change it's going to pass the value and also i'm going to add a on and the value as well in here okay so for the drag gesture in here I'm going to just check the start value and the start axis. If we let start value, let start axis. Not start value, sorry. It should be start angle. Start axis. Okay, and then in the else block, in case they are not available, I'm just going to assign it. The start angle with the angle and the start axis with the axis and in the on ended i'm going to also set the star angle with the angle and the start axis with the axis okay okay i'm just i'm going to ignore the air fail on the on ended now let's begin here let me just declare this let underscore angle and then let's just use this square root okay and here i'm going to use this pal power of value dot translation dot width power of two of this and basically i'm going to add this with the power of value dot translation dot height also by two and then here i'm going to add the start angle dot degrees okay i got the angle now i can basically define the x6 x okay i'm just going to put this in a parenthesis i'm going to use mainly dot translation dot height okay plus the start axis x and then i'm going to divide it by the cg float of underscore angle okay i got the axis x now let me copy this paste i'm going to change this to axis y and then in here i'm going to remove the minus and then i'm going to use the width okay and the star axis we're going to use one which is the y and then just use the same divided by the cg float underscore angle now i can assign the angle state with initializing angle with the degrees of double so we need to convert this to double and then pass this angle okay and for the axis we can simply assign the x axis x axis y and for the z let's just pass zero okay we don't need to modify the z okay now we got the rotation next one is and then next one is i think i missed this show the simul tennis gesture okay because and now we are going to declare the simul change gesture again for the magnify gesture okay and in here i'm going to add a modifier for the on change 
value in and also the on and the value okay we have the magnify gesture as well so in the on change we're going to check if let's start scale and then in the else just set the start scale just this on this is not exist with this default scale and in the on then that also is under start scale with the scale okay now if let's start scale we're going to use scale and then use this max passing z a uh, one okay and then we're going to use the min here for the lower bound and then and then we're going to use min here for the upper bound okay the maximum is three and then we're going to set the magnification value dot magnification multiply by start scale okay i think this should work now let's try to build i think the compiler is having a hard time with all of this code <laughs> not sure okay the build succeeded but the completion looks broken right okay it is, it is not able to provide us the completion with all of this code but now let's try this the simulator itself Okay, let me tap. Okay, it is able to open the window. This looks bigger with the scale of two. Now let me try to drag. Wow, nice! I can rotate it around. Now to perform the pinch, you can use this. Okay, option, and then just pinch it here to make it smaller and bigger. Nice, right? So this the, the maximum scale is three. And the minimum is one looks amazing okay we have implemented this now i'm going to try to add several more items give me a second here okay i'm going to add the this some item i'm going to load my air force one save it okay we have that so we can actually open multiple window nice okay we have an air force one we have the xbox controller looks amazing okay this is the night air force one we can rotate it around as well wow amazing now let me try to delete the item it should dismiss this window okay deleting nice the night air force one got deleted when dismissed when i delete the item from the ios app okay i think we have implemented the inventory item view volumetric window where we can play around with the item in here we can rotate we can drag magnify it sometimes the rotation can be a bit broken when you use the simulator but for now we don't have the real device right so at least we're able to simulate it we need to test it on real device which is not available for now so that's it but before i close this tutorial there's one more thing which is basically dragging the item to the shared space and open it in the quick look preview okay so let's implement that next okay let me just stop the debugger the simulator for now and as you can see in the inventory list view we have this on drag modifier and then we use this ns item provider so basically the idea is in here we're going to implement a custom ns item provider that conforms the to ns item provider writing and then we're going to basically load the file url containing the ucdz okay for that particular item provider so now let's do it create a new swift file give it the name of ucdz item provider 
Okay, let's begin implementing the UZDZ item provider. First, we need to import uh, Firebase storage and then import uniform type identifier. Here, I'm going just to declare a class UZDZ item provider. Make it conform a uh, subclass of NS object. Make it conform to codable and also the NS item provider writing. Okay. And in here, let's declare one let. And in here, let's declare one let UZDZ URL. Okay. And then let's inject that using the initializer. And then let's confirm to this writable type of for item provider. Here, we need to return an array containing a single item of UT type dot UZDZ dot identifier. And there's one required method, which is this load data with type identifier. So this provides the completion handler where we should pass the UZDZ data. Okay. Let's implement this. We go to the radio. Card lab file cache URL. We can get the get it using the extension of this UZDZ file cache URL. In case it is nil, we can just call the completion handler passing the UZDZ data and the error of not found. And then basically just return nil in here. And next one is we're going to basically use if let data and then just use try optional data contents of and then pass the file cache URL. So if the data is there in the cache directory, just Invoke the convention handler passing the data and pass the error as nil. If it is not there, we need to fetch it from the Firebase storage. Storage and then storage and then reference for URL. Okay, can just pass the remote URL using this URL that absolute string and then invoke write to file. Okay. Pass the file cache URL and then let's use the pass the completion closure in here. So you can just use switch on the result enum. Okay, for the use success case, just grab the value and then just use guard like data again. Try data contents of the value. Value is URL actually. If this nil, just call the completion handler passing nil and not found error. Return. If data is there, let's just pass completion handler passing the data and nil as the error. In case of failure, just invoke the completion handler passing data as nil and pass the failure, the error. And then here it requires us to return the progress. So let me just return nil for the progress. So this is the UZDZ item provider implementation. Now we can simply go to the inventory list view. And then in this on drag, just replace this. Just grab the UZDZ URL from the item. Using guardlet. In case it's not there, let's just return an NS item provider. In case it is there, you can simply initialize NS item provider using this object. Okay. And then pass this UZDZ item provider. Initialize this passing the UZDZ remote URL. Okay. From the Firebase storage. Okay. Now we can try this using the application pro simulator. Okay, let me do and run. Okay, it is able to run this. There we have the Xbox controller. So as of now, this drag, uh, this drag itself is a bit buggy in the simulator. So sometimes it doesn't work. I don't know why. So basically, let's try it again now. We may need to do it several times. Okay. So drag using your trackpad or mouse. Okay, outside of the window. Look, it doesn't work. 
Now let me try to drag again outside. Much outside. Still does not work, right? It's a bit buggy, but now it works after three times. So now we have these items. This this is using the quick look. Okay, we can put it around in the table. Can also I think we can make it bigger, right? Using the option. Okay, in here. Okay, so actually you can pinch this to make this bigger, but sometimes it doesn't work properly. Ah, now it's working. So now we can scale it around as well. We can rotate it around as well. Okay, looks amazing, right? So this is using the quick look. We can put it anywhere in our shared space environment. Okay, I think that's all for the features of this augmented reality inventory tracker for the iOS and Fusion OS. So basically using this, I hope you can learn on how to basically uh, integrate your iOS and Vision OS app using the Apple UZDZ. I think now it's open standard. It's supported by many other companies as well, such as NVIDIA and others as well. I think this UZDZ itself is originally from Pixar. Okay, So this UZDZ is basically the standard for the augmented reality going forward. Okay, And yeah, I hope you will learn a lot from this video. So take me quite a lot of time on thinking as well as experimenting on implementing this app so like the video if you like subscribe if you haven't and thanks for supporting me and remember that we will have the next video on this series where we will have the object capture to scan the UZDZ model using your iPhone leather camera in real time okay so basically we can just scan our own item and then convert it scan the photos using the photogrammetry convert to the high quality UZDZ model and then we can also upload it and use this in the AR inventory tracker app so i'll see you in the next video and remember to always keep on being a lifelong learner goodbye and see ya